back with Chris Pulowski. She is going to do what we are going to interpret as a proper doodle head. <laughs> so who, where did you get this dog from? Actually, this is my dog. And um, Jay said it was okay to say this, but um, she's, she's really a poodle. I do her like a doodle because most of my doodles are very encourageable and um, are difficult. I can't imagine traveling 18 hours in a car with one. So my poodle is very good to travel with, had a good coat, so I grew her out like a doodle for demonstration purposes. But I mean, I So what you're saying is you could just take an, your regular old standard poodle and make it look like a doodle without paying $5,000 for a mixed breed dog. Right on the money there. That's that's, that's amazing. That's good. Yeah. So so you're keeping the best and the no shedding and less matting and all that. Yeah. So. Yeah, and your dog seems very calm compared to most of the doodles that I've worked on in the past. Very excitable. They're great. You know, they're they're great. They're just a little wild, and uh, sometimes challenging. Not all of them, but most of them are challenging. So. Um, so what we were going to do is do, do her head, and what I like to do first is mark out with a three blade, three skip, from the Adam's apple, and I find her, just below, like, there's her jaw, so I like to stay around her jawline and just come right around, oops, that was her ear, come right around and go just behind her ear and get rid of all of that coat around the head. Do that on this side, right around. And right around, and I'm like, there's the back of her ear. So probably, I don't know, maybe from the Adam's apple around to, you know, just below the jawline is probably the best thing to say. To the back of the ear, it looks like. Yep, to the very back of the ear, exactly. And then I took, and I took that same three blade on the bottom, probably hmm, one third, two thirds of the ear, so that I, because the doodles, you know, they're always matted around the ears, so. Not all of them, but we can say that a lot of them are, yes. Well, the ones that have the heavier undercoat, like the more golden, and then the heavier poodle combination, they tend to have that cotton slash heavy coat, and when they mat, they pelt. And when they pelt, and you end up having to shave that off, when you release that, a lot of blood flows through that ear, and they can end up with hematomas. So when I get those heavy coated doodles in, I typically talk them into the puppy ear. Or so this is like a preventative for the next time. Yes. Yeah, so, and they look adorable, but they come back in good shape every appointment. And I say, I know you really like those long ears, but as soon as, as soon as I feel that heavy ear leather and that thick coat, and I explain what could happen, and I show them how cute it could look, then they're sold, and life is good for me and the doodle. <laughs> so. So that was the first kind of marking out that I did with the three, and then I tipped the ear. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, universal combs on, and I'm going to start with the three-quarter, and I'm going to go around her muzzle, all right, and get rid of some of that coat from in front of her eye down, in front of her eye down. Now, you've already started with scooping out with, is that a 10 blade around her eyes? Yep, and I can talk about that real quick. What I did is I took the small trimmer on the middle setting, which is about a 10 blade, and I went across from the inside corner to the inside corner. Then I actually took the um, pocket out from under her eye. I came under like so and cleaned that out, and I did the same thing on this side. And what that does is it cleans the eye out because a lot of times the mixes, the doodles, have some have big eyes, some have small eyes. If they've got poodle eyes and all that fur, they're very small and it, they're, you can't see them. And they're always watering and tearing and things. So this really cleans up that eye and opens it up nice. Just getting that pocket cleaned out. And her in particular, she had the entropian eyelid, one of her eyes I had to have fixed. And um, so that also helps her in particular. So I also clip all that mess out of their lip line. I take that and clean that, and it helps keep all that stuff out of their mouth. And it just. You also do a 10 there? Yep, use the same blade attachment for that as well. 
So once I get that done and I go all the way to the outside corner of each eye, very much like um, we do the Bichons. So, okay, then we're gonna take that blade. I went down and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get rid of that chin hair because again, another place that the doodles mat terrible is underneath their chins. So I only take the chin hair out from this direction and it really saves a lot of time, okay? Now, from there, I'm gonna pop on a one inch comb. So that was the three quarter inch. We're gonna go a little bit longer. No. I'm going, yep, I'm gonna go one longer. And I'm literally going to follow the lay of her coat and I'm just gonna come in and back and I'm gonna come right down into her neck, back into her neck and then the coat changes direction. So I'm gonna start blending. I'm gonna tip her head back. I'm gonna come back because the hair does grow backwards. If you come down that area, you'll end up making big heavy tracks, especially in some of that crazy combination coat. So we're coming back, all the way back into her neck. All right, we're gonna start changing direction and then tip it back, go down, down, down. This is the, all right, so that's kind of marking everything out for me and that'll get everything started. Now, if, if, if you want, you can always go over it a second time to, you know, but it's, it's not bad. Um, actually, I was gonna ask you, this is a really, really thick coat. Can you tell me what clippers you're using to get through that? Well, I'm using our new uh, Volt Clipper. It's a cordless, but it has a lot of torque. It's got a gear in there, torque, doesn't need a lot of speed. So the blades stay nice and cool. And it, it just, it plows through this heavy coat with, it's effortless. So I like the, it's my calming tool. It's nice and quiet and easy to work with. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my, I've got my Oster Super Steel Convex 2 shears, and I'm gonna go with the grain, stop. Always go with the grain up the ears, okay? And we're gonna come here, and I usually only trim the part of the ear that I clipped. So there's where I started, and I do the whole back, okay? So here that is again. So what you're meaning is that you didn't start up higher than what, then from here that you, that you clipped already? Here's our clipper line. So right here's where I'm gonna bring that line because I wanna make sure that this blends into a really nice round head. And if you start marking it out, you're gonna separate it. So I, I want them to see the ear, but I don't want it to like be separated. Kind of be shawny in a way, okay? So we did the ears, we marked her out, you know, with the three blades. So what I'm gonna do first, one, is comb everything back. And we're just going to use that line we started and clean all that up. This is awkward. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to take and make sure that we comb all this down, that we find all the hair. We're going to even that all up like so. All right, then we're going to pull all this forward. So that's also going to give a really good separation between where the head and the throat starts. Yeah, and it actually gives a little bit more, the illusion of a little bit more neck when you kind of bring it up to that jawline versus leaving a big heavy. And by where we're starting, you get rid of the, the matting spot of these doodles. So now hold their mouth shut, angle this back. Because, you know, they're always sloppy, messy right in there. So angle it back. And then I'm gonna take, comb this back, comb this back, and I'll come back with my blending shears and finish this nicer, but I wanna get all the hairs that it's popping out right now. I always try and make sure that the point of your scissor is way down past your um, corner of your eye so that you have less chance of poking them in the eye when you're working. And then I start moving into the head. I pull all this down and I typically will take my fingers and pull 
the inside corner of the eye. Come across here like so. Pull. Take it past the eye. And just really work that hair, how it curls into the eye like that. Just really work it, work it, work it. I want to get all that stuff away from their eye. So would you say it's kind of a time saver to be taking off the length with your straight shears and then going in afterwards with your thinners? Is that why you do that? Absolutely, because you're, you're getting a very precise cut. You're taking a lot more hair off than you would, you know, with the blenders. And so I, a universal comb, I scissor, I finish with my blenders. That's pretty typical. Now, once I'm done here, then I'm going to go ahead and lift everything up. Lift everything. That's some thick hair. Yes. She's, and she was bathed fresh this morning. I had her in the tub room at 7 a.m. So we're going to come from this ear, and we're just going to work around all the way around to the other ear. From this ear all the way around. And a lot of my doodle people absolutely despise doodles. I don't understand that, but that's the way they are. So well, they look so different. I mean, you would. I know. So I try to flatten this more so than I would on a poodle top knot. So more like a porty like, you would say? Yeah, kind of porty-ish is probably a better description of my doodle head. But I typically don't leave them quite that heavy, only because they get matted. Don't you think? Yeah. Mm. So we're going to keep coming. And then I'm going to finish, once I get it kind of where I want it, then I'll go ahead and finish these bangs just to make sure that I have substance and all that good stuff. And just what I'll do is we've made this line, so I'm just going to tilt her head down, stop. Tilt her head, tilt her head. And you can see that ridge that I'm making as I make my passes. And just go ahead. Make sure nothing is hanging over that line. And then all I've got left to do is clean it up with the blender. Which is next? Here's my finishing spray. I've lost it. So can you tell me what the function of the blenders is? What exactly they do? Well, the blenders are how they work. These are very chunky blenders. They have a very wide tooth span. And what they do is they're kind of like a scissor that shadows or softens. They cause almost like an illusion. And that shadowing or that depth of a blender um, softens your lines a lot so that your work looks more perfect even if it's not. And on the doodles with their crazy hair, you know, she's got, of course, a poodle coat. But on the ones that have that real heavy combination coat, it's really hard to get a nice finish on that coat. So I still do all the steps that I've done. Universal comb, knock it off. If I have to go over it twice, I will. Then come back with your scissors, get the bulk of it, the shape the way you want it. And then take your blenders and just polish off the edges. And it really is, it's fast and they look nice, and the trim holds for a long time. Now, I think when I was hearing about the blenders that were coming out, because they're kind of a newer thing, the blenders, um, I know I had questions about how exactly you're supposed to use them, as in your hand motion. So do you think it's more of a thinning shear motion or more of a regular scissor or combination? Um, I think it depends on the coat that you're working on. Like, I'm working on a poodle coat, so I find myself using a more scissored finish. When I'm looking at working on like some of the softer coats, I find myself pulling through, you know, the coat like kind of pulling through the coat a little bit. But ultimately, um, the biggest thing is knowing which ones of these to use where. So like these are great for outside the coat, but when you get really close to the skin, those will leave marks. So then that's where you want to switch to a 45 tooth blender. A finer tooth. Yes, and work close to the skin. So this, remember how it was not quite getting it looking nice? This will finish that off. And it will look much nicer close to the skin. 
than the um, 26 tooth blender. But see how nice that softened that line right up? It looks beautiful. And it's very clean. So any, any heavy coat, go ahead and use your big guys. But like I said, once you get close to that skin, grab your finer blenders. Like say, look, over the nose. Maybe I want to soften that up a little bit. Maybe she's got a few tags. Again, the finer. Now, I know that a lot of the ones that I've seen have a lot of matting and disgustingness right in here. Do you have any tricks to try and prevent any issues there? Well, one of the things is training your customers because a lot of that, they, they tend to drool more like the golden than or the lab than the poodle, and they get a lot of bacteria build up there. So one helpful thing is that three-quarter blade is pretty short. So they typically don't get as matted and start packing in there. Um, another thing is you can actually take a stripping knife and pull some of that dead hair out of the corners. When they get that buildup, it'll wick some of that out and use you know something antibacterial to keep it clean. I actually teach my customers to wash their face with a little bit of that gold dial soap. You so know. an antibacterial soap, you don't want to use alcohol after you pulled out hair or anything like that. Burns and, you know, dries. Another good one is ear cleaner. <laughs> Putting a little bit of uh, ear cleaner there. So anything that's going to kill bacteria without hurting. Without hurting the skin and causing more issues, exactly. So, yeah, and if they truly get infected, you can try the Vetrosin. That's something new here on our, our side, that they're equine friendly. And um, they... They're doing a nice job, and they work with the body. It's very natural, and it, it can heal up some of that area. But the owners are going to have to do a little work. I call her my little brown Gumby because she just, like, folds herself inside out. She's, She's awful really sweet. Cute. Awful sweet little girl. All right. And just check your work. I sometimes find that i got to go back and just blend a little bit more in that transition area on the ears. Um, if, if they have really bad ears, um, you know, as like in set or infected, a lot of times I will take the inside out with a 10 blade and it's, you won't notice it at all. And it just allows a little bit more air to get up in there and, you know, easier for the owners to keep clean. So, but, um, but those are rare exceptions. I mean, most of them are in pretty good shape, so. You know, with the ear in, if they have ear infections, do you tend to scoop out this hair right here in front of the ear canal, or can. is it? I try not to, because it, you know, it kind of changes the outlook of the head. I typically do most of it just on the inside of the ear itself. But if they have really bad problems where there's a veterinarian involved and regular medication, I don't hesitate to clean that out. The hair will grow back. So. All right, guys, it's not perfect, but that's a pretty low-maintenance doodlehead.